Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Welcome back. It is Wednesday, September 13th, and we have reconvened to start our push towards the February 2024 bar exam. Uh, that's pretty crazy. Tracy's here. June's here. Brianna's here. We may have some other folks joining us. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Tracy, how are you? I'm good. I'm ready to uh, bubble up and uh, start again. Yeah, bubble up is what you're going to talk about today. I have no idea what that means. It scares me a little, but okay. <laughs> and uh, June, how are you? I'm great. Doing good. I'm excited. Let's do it. Yeah, glad to have you back. And Brianna, it's great to see you. You've got the kiddos back in school and you're uh, ready for the fall. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited to gear up for this exam season and get just get going. Yeah, and I see Amanda is joining us here in just a minute. Bobka and Samantha may not be with us on the call today. Their schedules don't always permit that, but we are glad to have all of you. And we're certainly glad to have all of you as participants and students, those of you who are here with us live today. And uh, if you're watching on replay later or in the podcast later, that's great. Amanda, we are glad to have you with us as well. What we're going to be doing today, for those of you that don't know, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, information in the bar exam world. We're going to talk a little bit about results as we have them so far. We have a small number of results out. We're going to talk a little bit about the next generation bar exam, just to give you a heads up on where the, the world is headed there. We're going to make some announcements about our boot camp. We've got some very exciting announcements. I know that uh, this whole group is excited about it. We're going to do some different things for the upcoming boot camp. And we'll talk about group coaching and some of the uh, scheduling there. And then, of course, we have Florida results coming up next Monday. And then we'll answer some questions that we've gotten over the past couple of weeks as people get underway and start with their studies. So that's our agenda. And, and, and again, excited to see all of you here today with us as we get underway. I think maybe the place to start before we get to results would be for June to talk a little bit about group coaching because we've started that, we've resumed it. And maybe just June, you could talk a little bit about what group coaching is and who's invited and what's involved because I, I know that not everybody will have had that experience right now. Yeah, so hey everybody, I'm glad to have you all back. I'm ready for February 24 students to get started, which means you should be getting started now so that you have lots of time and can do it. Group coaching is available to any registered student. So if you have access to the course, you have access to group coaching. You do not have to let us know you're coming or anything. What you do is in our community group under the events tab, all the calls are listed there by their date and their time. We highly recommend group coaching calls. Our students who consistently go on group coaching calls are more successful. We've just seen that historically, which is why I've been here going on almost nine years. Oh, crazy. Yeah, I know, right? And, but which is why as we've grown, we've added more and more calls. You're not going to resonate with everybody. You're not going to connect with everybody. And it's fine. We understand that. We get that. When everybody has their expertise and things. So find what works for you and just make sure you're consistent with that. This entire course is built on consistency and that's what's going to help you be successful. So that's what I have. Great. Yeah, there, there's a lot of wisdom on this panel and there's a lot of wisdom in our group coaches and you should definitely take advantage of it. It also means you're not listening to me 100% of the time and it's nice to have another voice or other voices in the course. Make sure you take advantage of that and if you've got a question, shoot us an email, let us know. We'll be glad to, to help you out, but sample these different uh, group coaches and, and see what you think. So excited to have you do that. Thanks, June. Appreciate that. Let's talk next about bar results. And I want to just start by cautioning everyone that our sample size is still very small. 
up until today, uh, as we're recording on September 13th, we have uh, heard from a few jurisdictions, but they're all relatively small. I'm going to share with you some key statistics that I've seen, and then I'm going to throw it up into our panel to just talk about what the, the reaction is right now. What we've got up to this point, I'm going to focus on repeat bar ticker pass rates because I think that's more significant for our audience, but I'll, I will share with you a little bit of the overall rates. In Arkansas, there was a 29% repeater pass rate. In Iowa, it was 45%, which is a, a better number. Kansas was 56% for repeaters. That's a really good number. Nebraska, 36%. New Mexico, 39%. North Carolina, this was the biggest jurisdiction to report out so far. 29% repeater pass rate, 69% overall pass rate with 700, almost 800 bar takers. Oklahoma's repeat rate was 48%. Washington State was 33%, and West Virginia's repeater rate was 43%. Those are the only states that have reported results right now. And it's important to recognize that with these small sample sizes, you can see big numbers for repeaters, for example, where you see 56% in Kansas, there were only 150 overall total takers. So there are a handful of repeaters, and those numbers can be a, a bit deceptive. Having said that, the other critical piece of information before I throw this open to the panel is that the multi-state has now been scored across the country, even though results haven't come out everywhere. And what we now know is the multi-state stayed essentially flat in terms of the score with respect from this July to the previous July. That is, the mean score stayed roughly equal. There's no bump that's coming from the MBE, and that's important to know. It's, it's better than going down, which is what we'd seen for, gosh, I don't know how many exams in a row. So it actually stabilized a little bit, but it did not go up. So that's where we are at this moment. Let me just open it up to the panel. Amanda, what, I know you watch this stuff relatively carefully. What's your early take as you see some of these numbers coming out? Well, I did think that it was interesting. Students were asking about some of the higher numbers, but I also think none of the the bigger states we're really waiting on have come out yet. So I feel like it's too early to really tell a, a pattern about what's going on. It's certainly still, if in what pattern, is there any real change? While we've seen mm -hmm. some kind of outliers, is there a real change going on? I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I'm really curious to see what happens next. Certainly we've said that our one takeaway is that it's not an exam you can just waltz through. You have to take this seriously. And I think setting the tone early now for potential February takers and February takers is really important. So we could look at the numbers and ruminate there or, or stay with that, but clearly they show time and again, we're not getting 98% pass rates, <laughs> certainly. So yeah. we need to yeah. buckle down and, and remember to take this seriously. Yeah, I think so. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the subjects that were tested on the exams in a minute, because I think that's helpful. I will say also that we have put together in our course materials questions and sample answers in several of the jurisdictions. We're working on those. So what was tested in July will be in the course materials pretty quickly. In fact, in some cases, it's already there. Brianna, do you have any quick take as, as you heard these numbers? You did the New Mexico exam, didn't you, the UB? Yeah, yeah. Interesting number to see there in New Mexico where the repeat taker rate was 39%, only 170 takers total in that jurisdiction. Yeah. Quite frankly, when you were reading out these numbers to me, I'm pleasantly surprised yeah. that some of these jurisdictions have, I, I, I hate to say that anything below 50% is high passing rate for a repeat taker, but yeah. I was a little shocked. Yeah. So I don't know if it's necessarily, like Amanda said, maybe the trend and we're going to see that same thing happen in the bigger jurisdictions. I'd be curious to see if maybe some of this is the aftermath of some of the noise that has been from the previous exams. But at the same time, I don't truly believe that anything is just by chance or coincidence. I hope that uh, this is just a testament to how hard these students are working and the better work product that they're putting out on the exam. And 
that they're making it their priorities and doing the best that they can. So for now, I think it's shocking. I think it's great that we're starting to see that upward trend too early to tell really if what the results yeah. of the numbers yeah. came to. Yeah, it's like presidential elections. You, you get those first precincts and you go, oh, but the big states have not called in yet. And of course, the big one will be, the first big one will be next Monday in Florida. Tracy, you're looking at these numbers and now a little bit of perspective after a few exams and, and looking at this. Any takeaways for you in these early numbers? I think these numbers tell us that this is not something you can just get out of law school show up for the exam and pass. You've got to have some help. And the best help you can get is through CBR because personal help is so much better than just stacks and stacks and impersonal outlines. That's transactional or relational. And we're gonna stay with you until you are one of the numbers that say I passed. Yeah, I, I think that's really true. And I appreciate you saying that, reminding people of that. I want to just briefly talk about what subjects were tested in a couple of these mm -hmm. exams, just to give everybody kind of a, a perspective. I know we've got a lot of February bar takers watching and listening. We also have some July bar takers who are just going back. Florida, I mentioned the results will come out on Monday, and that will, as always, be the mad scramble to get on the website. So be patient when Florida releases. Typically, their website doesn't always hold up for the demand that's on it. But in Florida, the three essays that were tested in July were domestic relations. There was a property question, real property. There was a torts question as well. And there were lots of ethics subtopics in Florida. So there was a lot going on in that regard. We have put up, I think, the questions and answers to that, haven't we, Amanda, for that particular exam? Yeah, that we did. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think we've got it. So yeah. in your Florida materials, we've got the questions and we've done uh, sample answers or model answers. And uh, I thought the questions in Florida were reasonable. They were not crazy. They didn't go way off the, the spectrum, I thought. And so I'm encouraged about that. I will say what's going to be very interesting next Monday is to see how the Florida examiners chose to score and memorialize the Florida multiple choice because historically what they've done in Florida is to take three categories of questions. So it's procedure, evidence, business entities, for example. On this last exam, they asked questions from six categories. I have no idea how the examiners are going to score that. So I am looking forward to seeing that, but I will tell you that there were trusts, there was wills, there was Florida civil and criminal procedure, there was Florida evidence, and there was UCC articles three and nine. All of those questions showed up in multiple choice. Mm -hmm. That is new. And that is a segue from Florida, at least, to starting to think about what they're going to do in 2026 and 2027. Hopefully that will not impact anyone that's on the call today. But Florida has announced they are not going to take on the next generation bar exam, which means the multi-state bar exam goes away at least, at, at the very least, by uh, February of 2027, way down the road, but this may be the precursor to what happens there. So Florida, interesting. I'll just say also, if you're in our course and you get your Florida results on Monday, you will, let us know your results. If they're successful, we want to celebrate that with you. If they aren't successful, we need to see your score sheet. I will prepare a personalized video on your scores and uh, we will give you uh, our feedback as quickly as possible to get you underway. You'll have access to all of your course materials under our lifetime pass guarantee. So I, I would say this, trying to call me on Monday is, it won't work, you won't get through. And emailing me a long email, I'll read it, but I probably won't have time to respond. Monday is one of those days when I just cover up and, and wait for the, the moment to happen. So that's what's going on there. Now, we obviously have a lot of people in the uniform bar exam jurisdictions, and many of those states I just reported back to you were UBE jurisdictions. Let me just tell you that what we know about the UBE exam, and, and we've seen a lot of information already, is that we had the six essays there. The first was in business entities. Uh, the second was in torts with remedies. The third was a trust question. 
then there was a federal civil procedure, then there were secure transactions and criminal law and procedure. The two performance tests, there was a persuasive test to a legal audience, a brief, and then there was an objective test to a non-legal audience in the form of a client letter. So a little different on the MPTs. Most of the feedback I got was people felt like they could manage that pretty well. Most of the feedback on the essays was actually pretty strong, that the questions were not overwhelming. There weren't five, six, seven calls to the question. Most people felt like they could get through it reasonably well. Um, and we got pretty consistent feedback as I did post-mortems with our students uh, feeling pretty good about the UVs. So I, I share Brianna's uh, optimism. I think that these numbers have the possibility for our students to be very good. I'm just waiting, obviously, for states like New York and Texas and D.C. and New Jersey, where we get enough people taking the exam to get some feedback. Any comments about the UBE? Yeah, it's good to hear what our students said post-mortem, because I know that the students we had last round, they did work very hard, especially on those essays. So it's good that they could handle it and even handle an MPT that's a little different, that yeah, you maybe didn't get that much practice with that kind because we didn't, there was, and when you get those weird MPTs, it's like, it's not like you can practice all the, the weird ones. There has only been so many. Well, and here's the weird part. Amanda, in California, which doesn't use the multi-state performance test, their performance test was also objective to a non-legal audience. What's up with that? That, that was very odd, I thought. That our California. students were prepared, though, because we talked about this a lot in group, group coaching and in the MPT workshop. I don't know what you saw, Brianna, but I'm like, when you get this weird one, you're going to know when you get it. And then we were telling them, just follow the directions. So they probably felt like they could handle it. They went back to the directions because we did prepare for it, even though it's an outlier. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good news. Yeah. And One of the things that I always stress to, to the students is, is being mindful that one of the reasons that not just essays, but also this kind of offhand, the MPT, remember that you're, you're trying to show them that you can handle dealing with clients and that you can speak to clients so i think that might be another reason why they were a little yeah, bit i think they're trending that way i think they're moving to try and in florida in california and in some of these jurisdictions they're starting to move towards the next generation viewpoint of the bar exam california is not going to do next gen but this may be their way of starting to think about what their version of that will be so that's going to be interesting to see since we're talking about california let me just say that the okay. essays there were partnerships ethics, torts, criminal law, and then contracts with remedies. Again, not terribly surprising. And the feedback I thought was pretty good from our California students. They felt prepared and, and ready to go. And the questions didn't seem to be impossible. So that's always nice to see that. It, it, it's funny, the trends across the country where you see ethics showing up all the time or business entities or these performance tests. I think there's some uniformity, even in the jurisdictions that are not part of the UBE. So that's interesting. And then to wrap up our coverage of, of states that we work with specifically in Georgia, um, we had, of course, the two MPTs, same as the UBE, but the essay subjects, there was a con law question, there was a contracts question, a real property question, and then a Georgia civil procedure wills domestic relations, because it's Georgia and why not? So there, there's a lot going on. One of the things I really was happy about is that we did not get a lot of politically infused questions. We didn't see questions built on the recent Supreme Court term, in spite of all the confusion around that right before the exam. I thought it was a, a nationally a pretty balanced test. Now, we'll see what that means when we get to the big states, but uh, that's where we are. So. In terms of where results are going, next Monday, as we've said, is Florida results. Then near the end of September, beginning of October is when I would anticipate New York and Texas results. Uh, when we get into uh, late October, Georgia has announced October 13th. We'll see if they can make that date for their results. California has announced November 1st or the first week in November. So those are the result dates we're looking at. Again, big states, New York, D.C., New Jersey sometime probably 
in October. So September's an outlier, a little bit of activity, then it slows down a bit. Again, if you're in our course, let us know your results, send us your score sheet. We will get you up and going. One other thing, I've just re-recorded a video that I did many years ago called Five Things to Do While You Wait for mm -hmm. Bar Exam Results. Uh, the brand new version is up on YouTube, to, other than the fact my hair looks a little different. It's a good video. It's had thousands of views over the years, and it's really my suggestion about what to do while you're waiting for results. So I hope you check that video out. We will link to it when we post this later. We will keep you informed on results as they come out, obviously. You can also check the National Conference's website. It's a great resource for those official results. Okay, results season. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? We start results now, and we will be talking about results up through almost Thanksgiving. So a little while. I want to talk about something else happening in November, which is boot camp. We are doing live boot camp here in Denver, November 3rd and 4th. And we made some decisions during our hiatus about how to continue to improve boot camp. Uh, it, it was a great session that we had here. <laughs> so for this boot camp, we really wanted to get Amanda and Brianna involved. What we have done is we are bringing Amanda out yay, live and in person to do her MPT workshop and her MBE workshop. You excited about that? Yeah, it's going to be really cool. I know I'm excited. I think it's really exciting to do stuff in person too. Virtual is awesome, but I think some people, they just feed off of that in-person energy. So for those who can make it, it's going to be great. Um, and this is the first time I'm doing it in person. I think it's going to be even better. So it's really exciting. Yeah. And what it means is that I will be doing some big scope teaching on photo reading and mind mapping. And then Tracy and Amanda and June will be doing breakout sessions. Tracy, your breakout sessions, you're going to work on essay writing. Yes, on FLA, FLA yeah. T. What's the T? Timing. Timing. Oh, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. And June, you're going to be there to do mindset coaching. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. I'm excited about that. It's always fun. I, I'm the fun coach. We get to have fun stuff. I'm, I'm really I'm fun. fun. Well, no, oh, y'all are fun. fun. We, okay, let me rephrase that. They get to play with me. So it's not all academic, <laughs> but okay, I do fine. take that back that Tracy, no, Tracy and Amanda are lots of fun and Brianna's lots of fun. Wow. Okay. And, and How quickly well, they turn. Do you want to give away all the secrets? No, I don't. They Actually, come to no. boot camp and find out you're fun. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. And we've got some cool swag for you, but then we've got an extra bonus. Now we haven't mentioned Brianna. Brianna can't physically get out there because her life is, what, chaos? But there is nobody better at scheduling and structuring and making the chaos into something productive than Brianna. And she does the time management workshop, which is a gold mine. So we decided for this boot camp, what we were going to do is as a bonus for every boot camper, you will get to do the time management workshop included in your boot camp before you come to boot camp. Have I got that right, Brianna? Absolutely. You are going to meet with me. We are going to hash out your priorities and responsibilities, figure out what your schedule needs to look like, give you all of the things that I would normally do with my regular time management coaching call meet face-to-face -face on Zoom, and I will give you the same documents that I provide all of my usual time management coaching students, which gives you a full breakdown of where you need to be at when with all your guide posts on a monthly, weekly, daily basis, and also a weekly calendar that you can, all, I get you started on that, but teach you yeah. how to be able to take it over yourself. Yeah, that's really a great value. So, so let me talk about what you're going to get with boot camp. If you're not a photo reader, we're going to include the photo reading for the bar exam course. That's worth $400. If you're already a photo reader, we're going to deduct the price of your photo reading course from your boot camp tuition. Then you're going to get Amanda's MBE workshop worth $300, Amanda's MPT workshop worth $300, the personal writing with Tracy that's worth $300, the mindset coaching with June, that's $300. And you get me. I 
doing uh, photo reading and mind mapping, and you get to work with all of us, and you get to work with Brianna. Now, because we added Amanda to our live coaching staff, we felt like we could take a few extra boot campers. So we are, we're still keeping this really small, but we're going to take a few more because now there's more breakout sessions available. And the way that this works is you have to apply because we will have more demand than we have seats is my expectation. So June, if you could put up the link, either the application to uh, come to bootcamp, there's a hundred dollar refundable fee. Uh, that's just to show us that you're serious about it. And then once we've accepted you into bootcamp, you will have the option to either pay in full or to pay over eight months, which is a great way to do this. In fact, you could even probably do it with Klarna or Afterpay on our website and pay interest-free over four months. In any event, it's a great opportunity. And if you have enrolled, we would encourage you to start making your payments now just so you can get this paid off before you, you finish up. The boot camp will be again November 3rd and 4th in Parker, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver. We've got Lots of hotels in the area. We'll be doing lunch. We'll be doing a group dinner on Friday night. And we always have some surprises and some special guests. And as I say, we've got some swag coming. There's a lot going on. Man, I get excited about boot camp. It's really cool. So much fun. And I, yeah. I just love seeing the students connect and creating that connection that goes beyond boot camp. Like this last boot camp, we had quite a few who found their study friend, their study partner. And after boot camp, they continued to connect and push each other through the hard stuff. Because we had one student who really had something go down, and the other student from boot camp pushed her to go and move through anyway. And that was amazing to watch. And those are just the types of connections you don't get virtually. So that's, that's what right. I love the most about it. Again, economically to sum it all up, you're getting $1,700 worth of value for bootcamp. I underpriced it, didn't I? But we Maybe want you there because we know that people pass when they come to bootcamp. Yeah, it's really not about the money. It's really about the connection. And it's yeah. about the coverage. And I love the fact that we've expanded the coverage on this. Yeah. Well, the other thing I think that is really valuable is being in a breakout group with just a few other people and hearing and seeing what they have done and what the advice is to them at the same time. Um, that's invaluable to just uh, have other people's experience instead of just you, yourself, and your computer yeah. screen. So I, I really yeah. encourage you. There's no reason why you can't do this. Uh, we've made it so affordable. And uh, and the payment plan is so reasonable. There's really no reason why you can't do this. This is part of your professional uh, competency and part of your professional development. And I just want to say one thing. For anybody who's on the fence about photo reading, which I know there's quite a few students, or for anyone who has photo reading and is still going, I don't think I'm doing it right. I don't know. I, we had a student who has been a photo reader for a, a little over a year that came to boot camp. Jackson taught it live and it was like everything just opened up and the heavens sang and they got it. Like I, they told me sidebar, oh my gosh, I completely get it now. And photo reading is the number one thing that will save you so much time. In your bar studies yeah. so just for that alone i think it's worth it to have jackson teach that in person especially if you feel like you're struggling that right there is just everything yeah and not to blow my own horn too much but i'm the only certified photo reading instructor for a specialized exam in the world and i've worked with paul sheely i've worked with millicent st Clair. i'm I am the real deal when it comes to this. And Brianna could attest as others that uh, photo reading works. So we really want you there. We want you to have that experience. We want to give you as much opportunity as possible to be successful. If you have questions about boot camp, just let us know. Reach out to us. And uh, if you're not registered in our course, because uh, this will be on our podcast, 
we will take non-CBR students if we have space available. So again, you'll have to apply and we're going to hold you on the side for a little while. If we don't accept you into boot camp, we'll refund your deposit. If you choose not to attend boot camp, we'll refund your deposit. So you have zero risk at all. And of course, we want our own students to attend first. So that's boot camp. The links are up. Uh, make sure you check it out. We are excited to see you. And once we've got your payment for boot camp, we will set you up with Brianna to get your schedule done. So when you get to boot camp, you're going to have a schedule. And I think that's going to be a big thing. So thanks, Brianna. We're excited about that. Amanda had to jump off the call, but I know she is certainly looking forward to, to joining us all there. Okay, let's get to some student questions. I want to get to a few of them, at least the big ones. And uh, now that we're back, regular weekly calls, we'll, I promise we'll catch up on all the questions. I want to start with a question that came in, I think, on Brianna's group coaching call last week. We had a student who said, I'm taking the February 2024 exam. What's a good time to start utilizing my coaching calls with Jackson or Tracy or Brianna or Amanda? And my answer is now. This is the time to get underway. I think that we often talk about February you will appreciate that September you started your coaching. What's your take on that, Brianna? I, I the exact same thing. You need to start now. I know that it can be a little, I don't want to say overwhelming, or maybe you've got a little bit of nerves about hopping onto that first call. So maybe you feel like you want to do some more essays and practice and really start understanding FLA. But the problem in doing that is that you could be practicing FLA either the wrong way, or you could be practicing one way. And then we tell you to pivot and you've been doing it for so many essays that it's a little bit harder for you to start doing it the right way. So you should absolutely start making those calls now. Just jump right into it. I promise you it's not as scary as it feels. I remember being nervous the first time I jumped onto my coaching calls with Jackson and guess what? Everything turned out to be just fine. The other thing that I wanted to iterate in addition to that though, is during your coaching calls, I can't encourage you guys enough to be as forthcoming and honest with what you're really going through, what you are struggling with, writing those essays under timed conditions, because if you're looking at the model answer and then you're trying to mimic what goes on to the page because of that, and that's what we see, we can't coach that. We don't know where you are. We don't know what you're struggling with. So as honest as you can be on those calls, the more help we can actually give you guys. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Tracy, I know you're going to be sitting out part of this season because of some surgery, but you've done the coaching. What's your take on when people should start? Now, because the crunch is real. And I've seen too many students already get up to a few weeks before the exam, and then they're trying to still look at content. They're trying to learn FLA. They're trying to deal with all the things that are going on in their life. We have the holiday season coming up. We have weather, we have all kinds of things happening. And if, if you think about it, you only have about 20 weeks till the exam. So if you have 10 coaching calls, even if you do them every other week, that's a really good pace to get you to, to feel like you're ready and not completely crunched in on the backside. What happens when you crunch in too much right before the exam is you forget about one aspect of it. You just say, okay, MBE, I have to just put that out the window. I've got to work on my essays. I haven't finished all of my topic areas yet. Or you throw away essays and just say, okay, well, I don't have time to work on these essays. I didn't like secure transactions anyway. So I'll just wing it when the test comes. And that's completely the wrong approach. What we're trying to show you is a process and you have to trust the process and you have to work the process all the way through. Yeah, I think that's right. Working the process, following the program, this is the time to begin. All the coaches have opened up their calendars. We're all accepting coaching calls right now. So make sure 
you schedule for that. I'm glad the student asked that question. Along the same lines, we got a lot of questions about when do I start and, and so on. One student said, it's been 12 years since I graduated law school um, and I postponed testing several times. Uh, all things considered, would it be wiser to sit for February or July of 2024? My answer to that is sit for February of 2024. Make that your primary emphasis. If you have to delay or postpone, you can do so in our course without a justification or a reason. There's no cost. You can do it as often as you want. Literally, we're the opposite of most courses in that we just don't put any restrictions there. But I think it's better to have that goal of trying to get ready for this February test, don't you? Brianna, yes, you yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So even if you're sitting for February right now, and let's say you have a full-time job, you're really only looking about 12 to 15 hours is going to get you done with plenty of time to get through the entire course, all content, essays, MBEs. It's plenty of time and you can still have a life and you can still take off for Christmas and you can still take off for Thanksgiving. But it's but you still have plenty of time right now. Don't wait too much longer if you do have a full-time job and you do have other priorities you need to jump into because it will get overwhelming the longer you wait. Yeah, good advice. Absolutely. When we're talking about digital books versus real books, we've got obviously some photo readers. And one of the common questions we get is that if they're listening to Paul Sheely's audio tracks about how to, to study photo reading, how to learn photo reading, he references a physical book. That's because he recorded those a very long time ago, and that's all they had were physical books. But today, you can photo read digitally. That's how I do all of my photo reading. Brianna, I'm not sure if you did a physical book or a digital book. I did the physical book, but I, when I was on the go and stuff, I still practiced and dabbled in the, on the PDF online as well. So yeah, easily done. Yeah, and at boot camp, we'll show you how to do both ways. But here's the bottom line. When you're doing it on a computer, you just set a soft gaze by looking over the top of your laptop to the wall. And that gives you everything that you need. And, it, and then you hit page down. And if you're old like me, my fingers don't turn pages as well as they hit page down. So that's the difference. But you do not need the physical books. And you certainly don't need the photo reading book. We've got all of that in your photo reading course. You don't need the hard copy books. There are a couple of boot camp questions that we got. I just want to briefly cover those. We did get a question about whether boot camp would be offered again in Florida. The answer is no. We've moved to Colorado. This is our headquarters now. And so we've got a lovely location here in Denver. I will say Spirit and Frontier Airlines both fly to Denver pretty inexpensively. And there's a wide range of inexpensive hotels. We're going to take care of most of your meals. So it's a pretty economical trip. So even if you're in Florida, come to Colorado, um, it will work out. And then the last boot camp question that, that I got, was I going to be at boot camp? The answer is yes, I will be there. I will actually be live and I will be teaching live as will Tracy and Amanda in June. Brianna will do her work virtually in advance and we'll have some surprises as we often do. So those are some of the things that I, I wanted to just cover for people. Most of the questions we got really had to do with just, should I get started and how much should I put in right now? I think the reality is that at this stage, 10 to 15 hours a week, as Brianna said, is probably enough. If you get started, the danger point are the people that wait. But then there's the flip side of this, which is the people who are waiting for their July results. Should they start studying now? And what I would tell you is, for the most part, you should not. You should just be sitting tight. If you're a photo reader, go ahead and photo read a little bit if you start to feel nervous. But the downtime really makes a difference. It gives you the ability to reset yourself. And I think the constant nonstop studying actually is counterproductive. What's your take on that, Tracy? I actually think it depends on what jurisdiction you're in, because if you're in a jurisdiction where you're not going to get a result until November, I'm a little concerned about not doing anything. I think it's good to take a break. If you get your score, take a week or two, think about the whole experience, what you can do better, what you did well, and then dive in. But I think if you're not going to get a score until November and you're thinking about taking the February bar, I'm a little concerned about the timing there. Yeah, to be clear, I'm really talking about here in the middle of September. 
I think it's still a little early to start, but when the clock turns to October, if you're still waiting on July results and you don't feel great about them, it's not a bad idea to start doing some yeah. studying to start to get underway. I think that what happens, unfortunately, is that there are people that just never stop studying and it grinds on them. Brianna, you mm -hmm. went through that process and it's tough, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You just, you're, you never really know if you passed or not. Yeah, you have certain feelings, specific ways, and, and if you don't take that break, it's going to be really hard to keep going come December and the holidays and January. And you don't really get to have that moment where you get your results, accept them, and then jump back in. It's so I, I was going to just iterate the same thing that you did. So if you don't feel good, well, you didn't answer an essay question, you didn't really answer all of the parts of the question. You lost time on your MPTs. You didn't finish all of the MBE mm -hmm. questions. If you're in that boat, I think Jackson's absolutely right. Come October, go ahead and start jumping back in. It, it's a one-off kind of situation. If you're worried about it or thinking about it, reach out to me. Let's talk about it and see what makes sense in your situation. But I would rather you be proactive than, than to do nothing. The other thing that starts to happen at this stage of the year, and it's a weird time because we're looking at results from July. We're also getting ready for February. We got boot camp coming. There's a lot of things. This is when I start to get some fairly detailed questions from students, substantive questions, and that's fine. When those come, I want to just remind you that the way that we handle that is we want you to, to identify a question that you've got from a specific fact pattern, whether it's an MBE question or it's a essay question. We need that. Let me just give you an example. I got a question. Somebody said, is resisting and causing the death of an arrestor an unlawful arrest considered voluntary manslaughter or not guilty? Well, it's an interesting hypothetical. But really, the way it has to be phrased is, did you find a multi-state question that asked that or an essay question that asked it? What we want you to avoid are the hypotheticals from hell that we tend to create. It's way too early to be into the weeds on stuff like this. And that's often, and I'm going to say something that's going to really irritate some of you. It is very often those kinds of questions at this stage, a deflective mechanism. That is, I'm going to ask a question that has really very little to do with whether I pass or fail the bar exam, but it is a way for me to feel like I'm doing something when I'm not doing anything in reality. It's not very helpful to the student, is it? No, it's not. Getting lost in the weeds, we want to encourage you guys to learn the material and dig into it. And... If you don't understand something, work through the problem. But there's a difference between working through the problem and finding those answers and making it make sense to you than critiquing every single little thing and then getting lost in the weeds like you're talking about. And June, there's a mindset around this too, isn't there? It's sort of the, when I go into the cleaning my desk mode because I don't want to do something and you're like, get it done. That's the behavior, isn't it? Yeah, we tend to procrastinate and deflect and back away from things that even when they're very important to us, and it's not that we're lazy or anything else, but it's, oh, I know I need to do this, but I'm going to go do this. And trust yeah. me, even I do this and we all do it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, once you get in there and do the thing you need to do, you feel better and you're like, why did I wait? Why didn't I just do it? And I get emails all the time, especially from new students of, June, I don't know how to start. Just log into the course and read the first one and then the next one. And that's all you do. It's set up to make it very easy. And that's all you have to do. And there is a lot of apprehension, even though this is something you want. And I see a lot of students that maybe self-sabotage a little because they're thinking too far into the future and they get scared of what if I do pass, then what will I have to do? And so again, back it up a little bit. Remember, this is your goal. Remember your why of why you're here and take each step. We talk a lot about the process, being in the process instead of the goal. 
And that's yeah. what you need to focus. Because if you're focused solely on the goal, you're going to miss a lot of stuff that's important to achieving it. But if you're in each step of the process, people who stay in the process mm -hmm. believe the goal will present itself. Yeah. So yeah. I think part of what happens is that the people start using these kinds of detailed questions so early and they they lose sight of the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah you were going to say something. It, it's like we want to make it harder than it is. It's like somebody said, oh, it has to be so difficult. It can't be quite this easy, like photo reading. And it can be easy. But I think, again, as humans, we believe that if there's not strife and angst and, oh, my gosh, and it's not blood sweat, it can't be work. It can. It can work. And just take a breath. And some things are going to be hard and some things are going to be easy. And but don't make it harder on yourself. Yeah. The best piece of advice, just in furtherance of what Jean's talking about, and I tell my students this all the time. So if you've been on my call, you've heard this before. It is progress over perfection right now. You want to be waking sure that you're making progress through the course. You're not focused on perfecting every single aspect of the law, nor do we expect that, or is it required to pass the bar? Yeah, absolutely. Tracy, is this a good time to segue to Bubbles Up? It absolutely is. Bubbles up is a term <clears throat> that is used in teaching scuba divers what to do when they're down underneath the surface of the water and things get confusing. You're out of your element. This is a skill that you're not born with, how to scuba dive. And many times new scuba divers get very confused and then what happens, they start to panic. They forget everything that they have been taught and they are flailing around under the water and they lose sight of where the boat is. They lose sight of where other people are and they just totally freak out. What you're taught to do when you're scuba diving is when that happens, just look at your bubbles because your bubbles will bring you up. Jimmy Buffett wrote one of the last songs he wrote, he died September 1st. And, and many of us, when I was in law school is when Jimmy Buffett came about. I know I'm old, but he wrote a song in just the last few months called Bubbles Up. Some of it about his life, some of it about the journey. And one of his best friends was Paul McCartney. And somebody asked Paul McCartney, who was talking about Jimmy Buffett, if he knew what the Bubbles Up lyrics meant. And this is what McCartney said. He explained that Jimmy Buffett turned a diving phrase that is used to train people underwater into a metaphor for life. When you're confused and you don't know where you are, just follow the bubbles. They'll take you up to the surface and straighten you out right away. The bubbles are CBR. We are the bubbles for you. Follow the bubbles, trust the process. We'll take you to the surface. Listen to a few of these lyrics. I'm not going to sing, don't worry, but I'm going to speak them. It's a great YouTube if you want to watch it. But because of copyright situations, we can't put the YouTube up. But listen to this. When this world starts a reeling from that pressure drop feeling, we're just treading water each day. There's a better way to feel better. Be well. Set to weather the storms till the sun shines again. When your compass is spinning and you're lost on the way, like a leaf in the wind, friend, hear me when I say, bubbles up. They will point you, they will show you the surface, the plot and the purpose. So when the journey gets long, just know that you are loved. There is light up above and the joy is always enough. Cool, thank you. Great advice from a, a great New Orleans Stan, by the way, but a, a terrific wisdom and philosopher. June bubbles up makes sense to you, doesn't it? Completely, a hundred percent. And it's easy to lose your way. We do it; it happens. And to look for like your compass or your true north or your bubbles up—that's your guide. So just take that's a great. breath and look up.
look up and look up next week. We will be back with you. Uh, we'll have the, the whole gang here again. Uh, encourage you to check out bootcamp. For those of you getting your Florida results, we hope that they are successful and we're excited to celebrate and, and uh, uh, enjoy that success with you. If they are not successful, reach out, let us know, and consider boot camp. Uh, there's plenty of time for you to get in and uh, it makes a difference. Those are the people that pass, the boot campers. So we hope you'll join us for that. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, June. Good to see all of you. Thanks, Amanda, for being here. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you on group coaching calls and again next Wednesday. And if you're in the coaching program, go ahead and fire up, start sending that work out. We're excited and ready to get going. Hope everybody has a great week. Good luck again to all of you who are waiting on your results, whether it's in Florida or elsewhere. And we will see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye, everybody. Bubbles up.